What is up? This is Wes. Thanks for listening again to another Humble Libertarian video. Wanted to talk to you guys a little more about Alex Jones' recent censorship purging from all the social media platforms. I did another video on this recently uh, the other day, but I want to talk about it some more because this is, it's really bothering me. It's really bothering me that the reason, the official reasoning behind Alex Jones purging from all the major social media networks, the deletion of his channel, his 2.5 million subscriber YouTube channel, all of those people, without explanation, just he violated our terms of service. Then Facebook deletes his Facebook pages and says, well, he was glorifying violence. He was glorifying violence. They didn't point to any specific examples. They didn't give they didn't make any arguments as to what he actually did wrong. They just said he he violated our terms of service. He glorified violence. And what a strange thing to say about Alex Jones that he was glorifying violence. Given that Alex Jones is one of the most anti-war anti-military industrial complex journalists in the history of Western journalism. This guy is year after year for decades now. I mean, going back in, since the 90s, this guy has been against all of these wars. The war in Iraq, the war in Afghanistan. He was against the war in Iraq the first time. Then he was against the war in Iraq. He was against uh, Bill Clinton escalating Desert Fox into Iraq. He was against the war in Iraq in 2003, the second invasion, the one that toppled Saddam Hussein and the Ba'athist regime. Alex Jones was against all of this foreign interventionism and so skeptical of all of the military industrial complex and a completely complicit and sycophantic media that supports and swallows lock, stock, and barrel all of the propaganda and feeds it, spoon feeds it right to the American people unquestioningly, so unquestioningly, that beats that war drum. Doom, 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 beats that drum to the march of war, trying to get us all riled up into a frenzy of fear that we're under attack, that we're in danger from foreign powers, from terrorists who are targeting your Toyota Camry specifically on your way to work tomorrow morning. Whatever. They get us so scared of terrorism. Well, the truth is, you are so unlikely to be killed by a terrorist. You are so, so unlikely. You're more likely to fall off a ladder and die in your own house than to be killed by a terrorist. When it happens, it's so crazy that we all hear about it. The media reports about it when it happens because it's because it's such an outlying event. It is so extremely rare and unusual, and it is something that is shocking and terrible. So they get our attention with it. We all talk about it when it happens. So it seems like it's happening more often than it really does. And when it does happen, it seems like it happened to all of us. But it didn't. You just saw it on TV. Okay? It didn't happen to you, probably. Unless you're one of very few people. One out of a million. One out of more than a million. You probably have never been attacked by a terrorist. And never will be killed or hurt by a terrorist. But it's like all the media can do is just make us afraid. Well, Alex Jones is against all that. He's been against it. He's so against it, he doesn't even think most terrorism... His conspiracy theories are all of the form, any terrorist attack that happens is faked by the government so that they can use it as a justification to continue their wars and their regimentation of our society under 
the control of a police state. And he's warned us about the militarization of police that's been happening. All the surplus military goods, the hand-me-down military equipment that's getting sold to local and state police departments. So they're becoming increasingly more and more just like a standing army. And we're the enemy. He's warned us about all of the dangers to our liberty in supporting this never-ending global war. This never-ending global war. The New York Times just did a, a long-form piece on the just the, the forever wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. It's just non-stop fighting. Non-stop fighting. And it's so costly. And it doesn't make us more safe. It makes us less safe. It gets people upset at us. It's kicking the hornet's nest and painting a target on the American people's back. It's making the rest of the world resent the U.S. for its involvement in foreign conflicts that really are completely irrelevant to us or, or, sh- or should be completely irrelevant to us and, and we don't have to be a part of these foreign civil wars foreign conflicts over territory and power in backwater middle eastern countries man we shouldn't we don't have to be involved in any of that we could hang back here and just mind our business But there's a lot of money enforcing us to pay higher taxes, enforcing us to pay higher prices because they inflate the currency to lend money to the military-industrial complex to do these endless foreign military occupations and fighting in these foreign civil wars and all of these covert CIA operations to topple foreign governments and cause another war and create more conflict and keep it going. This is evil stuff and it's not conspiracy theories. I mean, at this point, you don't even need Alex Jones. Just read a few Wikipedia pages about like the CIA coup of the Iranian government in the 1950s and 1953 when the CIA went in there and just toppled a democratically elected government and installed a king. That's on Wikipedia, buddy. That's not Alex Jones. That's not InfoWars. That's Wikipedia. Why is the CIA in Iran... With American tax dollars, America is knocking out democracies and putting in kings? What's the point of that? They just want to keep the fighting and the instability in these places going as a justification for our military to take a side. And they just make so much money off of it. There's just so much money. Just fortunes that will last generations worth of treasure stolen from legitimate American businesses and families and individuals and given to these thieves. And everyone takes their cut along the way. The Congress thieves take their cut. The lobbyists take their cut. The Department of Defense takes their cut. And then all of these blood corporations, these war corporations, Raytheon and Boeing and Lockheed Martin take their cut and everybody takes their cut of the blood money. And along the way, they make more enemies. They make more people angry at America. And why wouldn't they be? You're angry about 9-11 you got scared and you got angry and you were going to be happy with a nuclear bomb dropped somewhere on somebody for that because it was so unforgivable and so outrageous. How many 9-11s worth of foreign civilians have been killed in these never-ending wars? And Alex Jones is <clears throat> hes one of the most against this sort of thing out of any journalist. 
Over his career, this guy has been so consistently... He's, he's faltered in a couple places. But he's way, way more anti-war than the entire mainstream media. Way more anti-war. And he gets booted, banned. He gets purged from social media for glorifying violence. As if that's not what the entire political system does and is. The entire political system. The Democrats and the Republicans. The U.S. military. Their Facebook page hasn't been taken down. You think the U.S. Army doesn't glorify violence? You think Donald Trump doesn't glorify violence? You think Hillary Clinton doesn't glorify violence? That's what she is. That's what she does. She doesn't just glorify violence. She does violence. She is violence. Donald Trump is violence. This this government... The United States of America is violence, writ large. They are violence, institutionalized. It's a system of violence. And the media just picks on this crazy dude who's anti-war. And they kick him out for glorifying violence. Interestingly enough, on Twitter, the editor of antiwar.com just had his Twitter deactivated. The director for the Ron Paul Institute, which is a very anti war. Nonprofit in the name of the former congressman Ron Paul and presidential candidate. So Daniel McAdams of the Ron Paul Institute, Scott Horton of antiwar.com, and a State Department Iraq War whistleblower. All three got their Twitter accounts deactivated this week. All anti-war guys. I mean, if that's not Orwellian, what's going on here? If that's not Orwellian, I don't know what is. These anti-war people getting purged for glorifying violence. See, libertarians, we, we are the anti-violence movement. Anti-violence is our creed. We are radically anti-violent. We are radicals for a civil society. One in which everybody is free from the coercion of violence. Because we believe that violence is the last refuge of the incompetent and the means by which inferior men and women get together and oppress and control and steal from their betters. If you agree, please subscribe to my channel. And visit my website, HumbleLibertarian.com. I've written a lot of great things there that you might be interested in reading as well. Thanks so much for listening.